All right, so in modeling one, I like to concentrate on base meshes with students. Okay, if you can get base meshes down, your life becomes a lot easier later on in life because then you can learn how to sculpt on them, and base meshes just are the core. I keep looking at Blender like, well, you know, I don't have to go very far to actually do the next step. You know, I can actually go in here and sculpt on the character, no problem whatsoever. I've been doing that ever since, you know, unit two, or no, unit three maybe. Uh, the only thing with Blender compared to other programs, like maybe ZBrush, is the fact that I don't think you can get to as high as polygons in Blender, okay? Which, okay, let's compare it. Uh, you pay $700 for a program that's pretty amazing, called ZBrush, and you can you can sculpt at millions and millions and millions of polygons. Uh, or I can be in Blender and just have fun. And if you're a new student, uh, you can get pretty savvy at things. And then when you do purchase a program like ZBrush, you're all happier for it. So Blender is a perfect new student concept. I, I like it because of the fact that you can concept shapes out very quickly. So here, let's go into sculpt mode real quick. And we can kind of flow this around a little bit better as far as the polygons. Okay, so here, I just want to tidy up things. Right here in this area, you can see that I'm having some kind of issue. So over here, I like to take the smooth tool and smooth that out a little bit. Let's talk about topology changes. If you wanted one form to be very tight against another form and have a natural edge in that area, here's what you do. You can move all these very close to the other polygon ring, or at least meet halfway. just like that, and then I would insert another edge loop. I could smooth out this transaction just a little bit. And to change the strength of smooth, you can change this value right here. I want a very low value, and this is just to straighten out the two edges a little bit. Now if I divide this character up, it'll have a natural uh, area of tightness in this, this general vicinity. Okay, so if I add a modifier like multi-res and hit divide, you can see it's automatically got this natural crease in here. So if you didn't want the stinger to transition like this, I'll go down in value. Let's go to edit mode real quick. Hit control R. Set an edge loop right in that area. Let's go back to sculpt mode. And I can now move that one closer to this one. Just like that, and when I go back up, you can see I have a natural crease in that area. So these are one-on-one -on -one concepts, but trust me, you might might be new to this. So I ha I want to cover these, 
and you want to see what it looks like at a higher res. Okay, so I'm already seeing that this might be a cartoon character type deal where if I had a smile in this area. Okay, now let's go down to about right here and look at where that's at. If I go further down, I get something that looks like this, which is kind of hard to see where that smile might be. This is where I transition into a new level of subdivide. And le this is my new standard. If I want to put higher res in here, I could. Whoops. Let's go up one. There we go. I'll apply this change and then I'll grab faces here. Turn it back to solid so it's not so annoying to look at. Unfortunately, you're going to have to hand highlight these faces. And I'm just showing you examples here of putting edge loops where they count. Okay, so this whole area right here, I want to make a mouth. Well, what I would do here is hit uh, extrude region, right click, and then I can go into scale, go to local, and do a little in green and a little in blue. There we go. In that area, that's going to be deemed the mouth of the character. All right, let's go back to sculpt mode. Let's uh, change some flow around. Uh, of course, I'm not going to make a B. That would be boring. Let's make a Cyclops B. That would be better. So I'm going to work out where an eye would go. Right about there is where I want the eye. So the eye would represent a topology change, right? So in here, let's go into edit mode. Let's grab these faces. Let's take and extrude them using extrude region. Scale them into the center just a little bit. Now I can make the eye two separate pieces if I wanted to. It, it all depends how you want your eye. Uh, in this case, I want a topology change that is so great. I want to go from a dome shape to this and if I do it with two pieces I would save myself some polygon count in fact I want to show you that just just for the simple fact that it's good education so here let's move this back W on the keyboard So 
So that's where the I would go. Again, let's add another form into the mix. And divide that up. Okay, I'm going to scale that. Let me pull it out this way so I can scale it the right way. That way I can see it better. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. Okay, I'm just going to rotate this just a little bit. And there we go. So I saved myself some polygons, and now I have this, and I could basically chop off whatever I need. Uh, I don't need to see anything past this string, so. Apply that change. That way in edit mode, I can chop off some faces. Go into wireframe. X faces. In most cases, this part's going to be a separate material altogether anyway because it's going to be very glossy. And I can now put that in the character. I could probably get away with one more actual loop in here. So. There we go. And that's the difference between using um, two meshes compared to one because in this area I want it to be domed. Um, I don't want to add any more topology here to support a dome. So this just makes a good fit. It's a, it's a separate material, separate object, separate textures. So we'll get into texture later. Now if I want an antennae, I could do that very, very easy because I have enough resolution in that area to support antennae. Things you should note is the fact that if you want to reduce down polygons, you can take out edges. So let's go into the next video where we can change a little bit more of the mesh.